Yeah, so what's up, Internet? This is Sinus Media here. And finally, I'm going to deliver on my promise of a second Protoplug tutorial. And Protoplug, if you remember, is the Lua-based VST, which you can put into your door. I'm sorry this took longer than I kind of implied. Um, partly the day job. Also, to be honest with you, although I was a bit blasé and I was like, oh yeah, Lua, it's just as like, JavaScript or Python, that kind of language. Actually, there are a few things that are different enough that kind of caught me out the first couple of times I was trying to do something. And there are some good examples that come with Protoplug, but they weren't written in quite the way I thought was intuitive and I, I thought would make for a good tutorial for you guys. So I kind of actually spent a bit longer rethinking how I would write some of the code I want to write in Protoplug and getting my head around the kind of Lua language, the bits of it that, that you know, it's not so different, but, but it catches, it certainly caught me out a couple of times and wasn't quite as straightforward as I originally thought. But I'm here with the next one and I've got a couple more in the pipeline. So let's get on with this. The next example is going to be some protoplug processing MIDI events. And so what I've written is a simple arpeggiator. So let's have a look at this. We've got some notes here in FL Studio and I've got a plug in Santina harp and listen to what watch Look at this and listen to what it does. Now you might, so it's basically taking each of these notes and it's building an arpeggio, a major, a major seventh arpeggio out of it. And you might think, okay, that's just built into the instrument, but it's not the instrument. The instrument is here and you can see we're actually getting, receiving in this harp instrument the four notes. So that's what our plugin is doing. This is what our, our bit of uh, Lua code is going to be doing. It's taking in this sequence of individual notes and it is outputting a stream of extra notes which are the arpeggios built on these roots. Let's have a look at how it does it. So the first thing to notice about using this Lua plugin to do MIDI, at least in FL Studio, is that we kind of treat it as a separate instrument in parallel with the instrument that's actually going to be doing the, the playing. It, it will be different in, in other doors. But I mean, let's have a look at this. Over here in our channel rack, we've got the Lua Proto Plug. And in parallel with it, or in another channel, we've got this Sonatina Harp. Now, what happens here is it's set up so that so this doesn't actually make any sound. This is just a MIDI processing plugin. But over here, I've got it set up in the second tab here. The output port is port 1. And if you look at the Sonatina harp and we go to it, second tab, you'll see that it's got the import port, the input port set to 1. So by doing that in FL Studio, is how we get MIDI that's generated from this plugin over here, outputting on port one, and it's being received on port one by this harp. So the code runs here, and the harp plays there. So that's the the kind of setup we have to do to do something in with Protoplug in FL Studio such that it can take in MIDI from somewhere and it's taking it obviously from this the piano roll here 
but actually if we were to just play from a keyboard into it I'm just playing the I'm just playing the computer keyboard there and you can see as well any any MIDI notes it receives it turns into arpeggios as well so let's have a look at the code I'm not going to write the code in front of you uh, I'm going to show you the code and talk you through how it works and I will obviously put this up somewhere for you to download as well first thing you know uh, Lua we're starting off with a comment just what this is it's I'm calling it a one key arp one key arpeggiator it takes the one note in and it generates a chord or a collection of notes and then it plays those back spaced out in time that's what's giving us our arpeggio and as always in these things we include a protoplug that's because protoplug is the library that the objects that contain everything now there's a function a couple of functions here that are just about printing out that's well I'm not going to explain those because that was for diagnostic processes when I was working on this like I say a few things that were a bit confusing about Lua and it was quite useful to have this function to just sort of print out a list when you need it but that's not really the important thing so how is this code going to work what we're going to do is we're going to we've got an idea of what chord we want to build let's say it's a major seventh so it's kind of going up it's taking the root note and it's adding some extra notes a certain number of intervals semitones higher and so we need to have a sort of template as I'm calling it the chord template that specifies what those notes are and it there's going to be a time step which is like the time interval between each of those notes we're going to play and so the first function we're going to write is just what I'm calling root to arp and that's the thing that's going to take in a MIDI note and it's going to take in the chord template in the time step and it's going to give us back as you can see here so you call it like this this is all comments but I'm what I'm highlighting there root to arp 65 50, you know you give it a MIDI note 65 you give it a time step 50 and in Lua the way you represent a list a bit different from JavaScript and Python is you use the curly brackets so these this list here is the intervals 0, 4, 7, 11 those are the standard semitone distances of a major seventh chord so this function is going to take in that data and it's going to give us back this sequence uh, list of pairs and the pairs are the actual notes that are going to be played and the second thing in the pair is going to be the time it's going to be played from the start so obviously the root note gets played at time zero then the this second note of the of the arpeggio is being played at fifth time 50 the third one the seven turns into midi note 72 it's played at time 100 and the fourth note the 11 semitones up on the root midi note 76 is going to be played at time 150 hopefully that makes sense and so it's you can see why it's useful for us to have a function that's going to start off with this basic data the input note the time step and the the chord template and is going to give us this information so here's how we write that we've got a function root to up there's the argument list we are going to obviously build up a new list or array inside I mean in Lua everything is what's called a table a table is like the same sort of thing as you have in JavaScript it's an associative array or key value dictionary or map as you would say in Java um, you'd call it a dictionary in Python in JavaScript you tend to call it an array in Lua you call it a table and you define a new one with this empty curly brackets we're also setting a sort of time counter and now we're just going to loop through each of the items in this template and the way we do that is this kind of format so core template is just a list but like JavaScript Lua doesn't make any distinction between dictionaries and lists or arrays so uh, 
an array where you know we tend to think of it as having an indexed by numbers it's got a first element second third fourth etc is actually implemented in Lua as just a, a lookup dictionary uh, key values so although we can define it just as a literal by writing some list of numbers in curly bracket this kind of is stored internally as the key as key value pairs so let's take something like this right the the list 0 4 7 11 is actually stored internally like a dictionary or a or a, an associative array there's a a thing for looking up the first element an index for the first element an index for the second element an index for the third element an index for the fourth element okay i'm i'm being a bit laborious but this is something worth knowing if you're going to write in Lua and the really important thing to know about this in Lua is unlike most languages these days the convention is that the first element is at index 1 rather than 0 so if you've ever used Python if you've ever used JavaScript if you've ever used C if you've ever used Java if you've ever used most languages Ruby which includes Sonic Pi most things, the list element, the index of the first element of a list is index zero, etc. Lua has gone the other way and decided to start off with one, which is one of those things that shouldn't matter in the kind of cosmic scale of things, but is bloody annoying when you actually, you know, you're trying to write something and you forget. Uh, you, can, you can get yourself into a certain amount of trouble. So it literally thinks... That are, I'm going to type this a list like 04711 it's literally in, internally stored as the number 1 maps to the 0 the number 2 maps to the 4 the number 3 maps to the 7 and the number 4 maps to the 11 that's the kind of dictionary internal dictionary representation that this list turns into now you know that this list of the chord template is really a kind of dictionary, then you're doing a like a a, a for loop that runs through it. You can use this function here called ipairs that takes that and sort of returns a sequence of the key value from that dictionary, which in our case is going to be these numbers. 0, 4, 7, 11, but indexed with the key 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the way in Lua you write a for loop. Uh, we could have written something like key here. So just got the key, and I'm calling it the offset, the offset. So like the first time around this loop, we're going to get the 1 as the value of the key and the 0 as the value of the offset. The second time round, we're going to get the, the 2 as the key and the 4 as the offset. But we never use the key, so in Lua you can just write this to say it's a placeholder, something that we don't care about. We're never going to use it. This is a, a, a Lua idiom to write a loop that steps through the pairs in this table, as they call them in Lua, that contains our core template. So basically... You know, what's this going to do? It's going to turn one note into four notes. So we've got to create a list called notes to put the thing in. And we are going to run through the four items in our template and do something with each item in our template. So what do we want to do? Well, we obviously want to create this pair of things, the actual MIDI note value and the time offset. And we want to put it into this notes table here and the way we do that is we use a built-in object of library in fact called table which has a method called insert so that's why it says table.insert we're basically saying to this this library called table call your insert method which takes as the argument first argument the actual table we're going to insert into so notes so we're saying insert into that notes thing and what are we going to insert? Well, create a new short list, which is just a pair of the root value, that's our original note, plus the offset, the offset which came out of this 
template, which is obvious, right? You know, we're going to start with our root node, which is 65. And we're going to add to it 0. We're going to add to it 4. We're going to add to it 7. And we're going to add to it 11. And the second element is going to be this variable t, which is our time. And then, of course, the next line is we're simply going to increment time t by the time step, which we received as an argument. If we sent it 50 as a time step argument, these things are going to be going up in steps of 50. We finish the loop and then we just return this new notes table we've created. So that's the kind of basis of our arpeggiator. Now, the next things in our code, local here declares some variables. In fact, these variables are global within our plugin. So core template is the definition of our template. Time step is 50. And we're going to also now start creating something else. The problem we're dealing with here is time. We are going to create in our arpeggiator. What makes an arpeggiator a bit more complicated than you might think is that we are creating a series of extra MIDI events that are going to happen in the future, right? We run the code at some particular time. In fact, the time we're going to run a lot of this code is when the we first receive the root note here you know at this time we're receiving a note on and at this time we're receiving a note off at this time we're receiving a note on and at this time receiving a note off. these are the midi standard midi things but when it comes to our code obviously the arpeggiator is pl is playing extra notes at other times and so what makes the code a little bit more complicated is dealing with this kind of queuing up events that are going to happen in the future. That is something that adds a little bit of extra complexity to writing this code because it can't all just happen at one point. But of course, once you understand this, this is going to be a useful set of techniques for thinking about programming sound and music in general. The way I'm handling this problem is I'm creating this other table or array here called the future buffer. What's the future buffer? That's going to be the buffer of events, things we're going to put in that are going to happen at some point in the future. Some code is going to run now when we receive the original note on information. And it's going to create some extra information that is going to put into this future buffer table and at some point in the future, something else is going to read that and discover, OK, now it's time to play that note and it's going to play that back. So that's what the future buffer is. Finally, I needed a couple of constants just for the way I represent this stuff. I wasn't going to start creating classes and things for this. I just created two variables called note on and note off. These are constants. This is just so that we know when we're dealing with, with our things that represent notes on and notes off. So we've currently, in order to generate our arpeggio, we've written our root to arp to turn information about a single root note into the collection of notes and the collection of, the collection of time offsets we need to play it. Now we need to turn that information into the things in this future buffer. In other words, the events that are going to happen in the future. And these are going to be MIDI events, so there's just a little bit of extra complexity involved here. And the extra complexity involved is going to be that note on, well, all MIDI events also have channels, and note on has velocity data. So how are we going to represent this? Well, we are going to represent that as what I'm calling here tuples, like right? tuples are Again, just another sort of list of data items. Everything in Lua is represented by this structure it calls a table. So it's just going to look the same, but conceptually I'm calling it a tuple. Tuple is just a word that is used to mean almost like a record or a fixed length collection of 
information where the order determines what the information is. So in this context, there are two sorts of tuples I create. One is called a note on, one is called a note off. The series of numbers, in this case, for example, the first item is the flag for being note on or note off. If you remember, we defined note on as one, note off is zero. So the first element of this tuple is just a flag to say what kind of event is it? Is it a note on event? Is it a note off event? Okay. The second one is the MIDI channel. The third one is the MIDI note that's going to be played. The fourth one is the time offset. So is it zero or is it going to be X number of time steps in the future? And then if it's a note on event then there'll also be an extra a final fifth item which is the velocity information so up here we define something called future buffer that's the buffer of all the things that are going to be happening in the future and our job is to fill that buffer up now with tuples that have this format now this format i just decided to use i'm not saying it's the best format to use for this but I think it's a simple format that keeps the code fairly short. And for this example, and, and it doesn't require us to get too much more into Lua. Lua is an object-oriented language, so we could create classes for note on events and note off. And you'll see that actually Protoplug itself does have perfectly good classes for MIDI note on and MIDI note off that contain most of this information. They weren't suitable for this because I needed to also store the extra information about the time offset, which the default MIDI events don't contain. And rather than getting into how Lua creates classes and objects or inheriting or whatever, I just decided to keep it simple with these simple tuples. You may decide you want to do things differently, but that's how this is working. So if we receive either a note on or a note off at a particular MIDI note, we now know how to convert it into this collection of notes and time offset. We now need to, to create these tuples that we can put in our future buffer. So the functions my note on and my note off, they're going to create these tuples, they're going to update the future, they're going to add them to the future buffer. So the first argument we're going to pass to them is the future buffer itself. The second argument is the MIDI channel, the third is the root note, the fourth is the velocity. Now the first thing we do once we get inside these functions is we call root to ARP. So given this one note, we're going to generate enough information for the four notes, right? You see that in both the my note on and the my note off. First thing we do, receiving the future buffer channel and the root, we send, we call root with the time step and chord templates these are globals remember and we create something called ARP which is this list here or this table containing these these pairs so we've now got the information about the notes we need we now loop through that that ARP data structure here we loop through this taking each of these pairs and we are going to create the appropriate tuples for them. Future buffer is another table, we call the table insert again and into it we create this new tuple here, note on tuple, note on value. Remember the note on is just the flag we're using for saying this is a note on event. The channel v1, in other words the first element of this which is the note v2 which is the second element of this which is the time offset and finally the velocity my note off is almost identical except in this case we're putting a note off and we don't have the velocity because there is no velocity associated with midi note off so by the time we've got here we've got these functions root to arp my note on my note off this is all the code we need that's sufficient for on receiving either a note on or a note off MIDI event from the piano roll or from the keyboard to take that information and put into our future buffer all the extra note on, note off 
events that we are going to need to play this arpeggio. So now we come to the the part that's now more connected with the the VST standard in the door. And that, if you remember from the previous video, is this thing called process block. And process block is the code which is called the the door is calling this function in the plugin at regular intervals. And in fact, if you remember, there's a kind of buffer size of sound samples in your in your door, and basically that could be 512, it could be 2048, 4096, something like that typically. And every time it needs to refill that buffer, it calls your plugin using this function, plugin.processBlock, to say do your thing at this point. Now, in our case, we don't we aren't generating any audio from inside this plugin, so we don't care very much about updating the samples buffer. So these first two arguments, they're standard arguments you always receive. We the first two are not interesting to us today. We're not going to update the samples, which is the array of of sample data. And we are not going to care about how long that buffer is. Perhaps in future we, we ought to think about that, but, but we're ignoring it for the moment. The third thing we're receiving is the thing that we care about a lot, and that is the MIDI buffer. In other words, every time the door calls this function, if a new MIDI thing has happened, a new MIDI note on or a MIDI note off or something else, that is going to be inside this MIDI buffer. So that's where we're going to look to get what the door is actually doing. And every time we get called, this process block gets called, we're going to have to deal with that. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to loop through and find out what are the MIDI events we received. So here the MIDI buffer has got, is an object, it's got an each event method it's going to be some sort of iterator through that. So just by doing this for ev in MIDI buff each event do, this loops through all the current events there. Now, ev in this context is a MIDI event object, in fact, as defined by Protoplug and probably, is almost certainly, is the juice standard object for representing MIDI events and quite possibly is is a VST standard as well. I don't know enough to know that. But it's certainly the way Protoplug represents them. And it's got a method like is note on, right? It's also got a method is note off. So the first thing we're going to say is if it's a note on information, then we need to turn that into something in our future buffer and the way we turn something you know we add a new thing to our future buffer is to call the my note on function we defined here so if it's a note on midi object we're going to add to the future buffer one of our event represent our tuples that represents the event right and so you just call the my note on function now you'll see this is why we kind of wrote it like this because we want to take our part of the code that manages our data structures like the future buffer etc and keep that as much as possible out of the, the stuff that's to do with with protoplug so look if we say so if it's a note on if this ev is an object containing a note on midi event we call the my note on function we're going to give it this global future buffer again the note on object has got methods like get channel get note get velocity we just use those three as the arguments chan root velocity 
Now, given that inside this we've already done everything we need to do to update the future buffer, that's all we do here. You know, we run through these events, all the note on ones we call this, and we add those note ons to our future buffer. All the note off events, we add the note off events to our future buffer in our particular format. So that's stage one of our processing. Turning the inputs we received, uh, this thing here, into our version of all the events sufficient for an arpeggiated version of these notes. The next thing that's going to happen, and this is all still going to happen inside this process block method, because the process block method has to do everything. All of all of what we do as a plugin, we do in response to the door calls to us, do your thing, and we do our thing here inside this process block. So we've started off by running through that MIDI buffer and taking all the note ons, taking all the note offs, turning them into events for our future buffer. Now our plugin isn't going to do anything else with any other MIDI data so we're now going to clear the MIDI buffer at this point. Now what we're going to do is kind of the, the mirror image of that. Now we're going to run through our future buffer and say okay are there any currently any events in our future buffer that are ready to go that are ready for us to do something else with okay and so the first thing we do now this is the convention this hash future buffer is the way that Lua tells you the size of the future buffer or the, or the length of the table so hash table name just means the length of that table hash future buffer is greater than zero is just a test to say does the future buffer currently have anything inside it if it's zero then it's empty so we don't have to do anything else we can that that's it but if there's anything currently in the future buffer then we're going to do this now we're going to loop through all the items in it it's not a particularly efficient mechanism this but it's fast enough for our purposes so we're just going to loop through all the items in the future buffer remember the future buffer contains a list of tuples like this note on tuples and note off tuples each of them containing all the relevant data the k again is just the index of that so it's just you know one two you know so it's item one item two items so it's just one two three four etc in this case we are going to need it when we come to remove items from the buffer so that we get the k and we get the v and the v is going to be one of our tuples it's going to be either a note on tuple or a note off if you remember the fourth item of the tuple one two three four here is the time offset now the way we're going to treat these time offsets is we're basically going to treat them as counters counting down so when inside our tuple we have a zero for the time offset that means it's time to play this event okay now remember that the index is four because we're of the tuple one two three four so the index is four so and the tuple is in this variable v so if v of four is the time offset so we do a test here if the v of four is, is less than one then it's ready to go we're ready to pop we're ready to it's now is the time to turn that thing from our future buffer back into a real MIDI event that's going to actually play something, play a note in the door. It's cut, its time is now. So we're going to just define a variable called MEV. And now the first item in that tuple, if you remember, is either, is it a note on or a note off? We're going to test, is it as a, a note on event or a note off event? Okay, if it's a note on event, now we're going to call this thing that's the MIDI library that's part of Protoplug. There's an event class, and that has a note on 
method. It's a class method, right? We're going to send a method to the event class, which says, create me a new MIDI note on event object. Okay, which is what internally Protoplug and probably Juice and maybe even VST, you know, are working with. And of course, what do notons contain? They contain channels and notes and velocities. So that data was at elements two, three, and five of our tuple here. So we're simply turning our tuple now back into an official MIDI object inside this variable called MAV, MIDI event. On the other hand, if it was not a note on, then it was a note off, then we just call the midi.event.noteOff method that creates as an official note off object and that takes the same channel and note data but doesn't take a velocity data. Velocity, remember, is the how hard you've hit the piano key or it's kind of like the volume but in fact in MIDI mostly it's used for volume but you know, a MIDI instrument could map that how hard you hit the piano key to something else rather than volume so it's called velocity so all MIDI note ons have what channel they're going out on what the note number is and what the velocity is if if it was time for our future event to actually play, this just turns that back into a real MIDI event in the format that's ready for the MIDI buff variable, which we got sent here, if you remember. That comes from the door. So that's the MIDI events, the real MIDI events, the door cares about and now we're simply going to call the add event method we're going to put our new MIDI event back into the buffer you know it, this is convoluted but it, we're doing this because we're having to handle spacing these things out in time if you are doing something that just create took one root note and created a chord and there's a, an example of that that comes with protoplug where all the notes would be played at the same time then it would be simpler because you'd simply create new MIDI event note on note off event objects in the format but because we've got this spacing them out in time with our future buffer there's an extra complexity but anyway we've come here events that are ready to go turn into real MIDI events get added to the MIDI buffer and of course we also want to remove them from our future buffer so table has got a method called remove, table.remove from the future buffer. The argument it takes is the index, which is why we need to remember the index at this point. So everything that was an event that was ready to go now got turned into a MIDI event on the MIDI buffer. However, if this number in the tuple let's say here is not zero but it's 100 then it's still in the future it's not ready to go so what are we going to do well we're treating it as a counter we're simply going to subtract one from it and so it's not ready but obviously it's getting closer to be ready it's it's not ready to go yet but here's what we do it's at element v4 so we just say v4 equals v4 minus one these are kind of like arrays they are mutable so the data in this future buffer we can we can change some of the values inside it if something you know initially was generated with a an offset of 100 steps in the future by the time we get down to here the the equivalent event of it is down here or our tuple is down here that's going to be subtracted. It's now going to be 99 in the future. And of course, you can see that we're going to go through this 100 calls of this uh, plugin process block function in order to count down from the 100 to 0. So, just to be clear, that length, that time step, is a rather arbitrary. Uh, number it doesn't represent seconds or milliseconds or 
In fact, it represents numbers of calls to this process block. And that in turn depends on the buffer size that you've got set up in your door. So that's a bit weird and not an ideal solution. I'm doing it because that's just really simple. But if you were doing this more seriously, you would have to think about how to represent time offsets in a slightly more logical way because literally you change your buffer size and you'll and you'll speed this up or slow it down uh so be aware that that's a, a hack but nevertheless it works and it should be understandable at the moment in this context so that's it that's literally all there is we created these three functions to turn roots into to, to figure out the time given a route to figure out what extra notes we needed and when we needed to play them we created these functions that took data and put it into this future buffer at this point in our process block we run through all the midi in events for the notes that were on the piano roll or from the keyboard turned them into called these my note on my note off to turn them into all the events we needed in the future buffer and then we ran through the future buffer and any event in the future buffer which needed to be played now got turned back into official midi objects and put back in the midi buffer right and taken off the future buffer again and anything that was on the future buffer that still wasn't ready to go we just decreed we just decremented its timer uh, or the time so it was getting closer to its time to play and that's it that's it by the end of by the end of of the process block which is what the door calls and the door gives us both this buffer full of sample points that we can do something with and it gives us a midi buffer you know we've simply rearranged taken some stuff out of the midi buffer put some other stuff back into the midi buffer and now we finished our job and the job of the the door is now to go having called that function to go and look in the the midi buffer that the plugin returned and do something else with it and we know what it does with it because we've set up the output port here it sends it all off to the output port one and we know over here we've got an instrument listening on output port one that just plays the note so and it works you know that's what it does so given given this it's created an arpeggio for us being sent to this instrument which plays it Now, let's just show what we can, you know, this the code is doing its thing, right? If we took that time step and we halved it, we are going to speed up the arpeggio. But I have to compile it, of course. Notice that we are not changing when these events happen these events are happening at the same speed and the same frequency but the collection of future events that get created whenever it receives one of these everything is now much you know instead of being 100 in the in the future it's only 50 instead of being 50 it's only 25 etc similarly we could make it longer and then they would be start to overlap if we make it a hundred oh. so that works as you would expect uh, another thing we could do is we could sort of add some extra things in our arpeggio to come back down again if we added these two 
and let's speed it up a bit. Let's go to here. Compile it. Must remember to compile it. Let's go back down to the zero. just come down. Or a more complex pattern. Oh, that was the major uh, seventh, but we could turn it into a minor seventh. Or a diminished seventh. Or some other combination. So that's how you create an arpeggiator to process MIDI data, to take in something, transform it in some way, spit it out, and you know you can do something creative here. You can kind of start adding some interesting harmonizations, arpeggiations, uh, even longer patterns could be created from some simple data. So I think that's more or less it for today. I hope that this has been informative and it will give you some ideas of other things you could do to process MIDI inside your own plugin and use it in your door and in your music and obviously the code will be put up somewhere. So go, go play, try it out uh, make your own variations and this is still the beginning we're going to do more pro to plug and more other things as well I've got currently I've got videos on I've got more pure data I've got more sonic pi I've got more micro bits projects in the queue in the pipeline and but there will definitely be more pro to plug as well so subscribe Stay tuned, do that whatever it's called bell thingy so that you can you know you you don't miss it and yeah thanks for thanks for watching. I'm out.